Hey guys, um, welcome back to another Bible reading. Um, and yes, those those cans back there are Pringle cans. Don't worry, I collect them over time. So if you guys have any extra, you know, one I don't have, I can send a picture out. Be like, hey, these are the ones I have. You guys have any? You know, I don't have. Send them to me. I like to collect. I'm a collector. I know it's a bad thing, but it's all right. <laughs> Anyways, um, back to the Bible reading. We're going to be in chapter 46 of Genesis. The chapter title is Jacob Goes to Egypt. Last time we were with Joseph. He just made himself known to his brothers. And um, the king of Egypt um, gave Joseph his family land and everything so they could live there. But now we are on to Jacob. Uh, Jacob goes to Egypt. So the Israel sent out, or set out with all that was his. And when he reached Beersheba, or Beersheba, I think that's what it's called, <laughs> he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in a vision at night and said, Jacob, Jacob. Here I am, he replied. I am God, the God of your father, he said. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. I will go down to Egypt with you, and I will surely bring you back again. And Joseph's own hand will close your eyes. And then Jacob left uh, Sheba. The Israel's son took their father Jacob and their children and their wives in the cart that the Pharaoh had sent to transport him. So Jacob and all his offer, offspring went to Egypt, taking with them their livestock and position or possessions, ugh, <laughs> possessions they had acquired in Canaan. Uh, Jacob brought with him to Egypt his sons and his grandsons, and his daughters and his granddaughters, all of his offspring. Okay, so we're about to go through um, the Jacob's descendants. Okay. Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob, okay, the sons of Reuben, Hanok, Palu, uh, Hezenron, and Carmi. I am sorry if I'm butchering these names, just be like down below, be like, hey, Greg, pronouncing these wrong. It's like they should be said this way, and I'll try my best to do it. I do have a small speech impediment, so you got to give me just a little um, room, okay? I'm sorry, guys. The sons of Simon, uh, Jamal. Or Jamal, uh, Jamin, Ohad, Jokin, and Zohar, and Shal, the son of the Canaanite woman. The sons of Levi, Levi Gershon, Kokoth, Merari. The sons of Judah, Judah, uh, Ir, Er, I think, I don't know. Ona, Shila, Perez, and Zira. But Ir and Onan had died in the land of Canaan. Oh, that's sad. Um, the sons of Perez, Hezron, and Hamrel. The sons of Eshekar, Tula, Pra, Joshrub, and Shimron. The sons of Zebulun, uh, Zerod, Elon, and Jahala. These were the sons of Le, bore to Jacob, and Padadon, Am. Besides his daughter, uh, Dinah, these sons and daughters of his were 33 in all. That's a lot of children. Well, I don't think they're all, like, they're, like, granddaughters, and, you know. The sons of Gra Gad, Zephron, Haggi, uh, Shin, or Shunrin, Zedbon, Eri, Arodi, and Erli. The sons of Esher, Imnar, Eshvan, Eshvi, Beria. Their sister was Serha. Man, I'm sorry for all these names, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the sons of uh, Bera, Herber, and Malachi. These were the children born to Jacob by Zilbra, whom Lebron had given to his daughter Leah, sixteen in all. Okay, the sons of Jacob's wife Rachel. Everyone knows Rachel, right? <laughs> Joseph and Benjamin in Egypt. Manasseh and Ephraim were born to Joseph by the Ezenith, daughter of. Prothiaphi, the priest of On. The sons of Benjamin, Bela, Brecker, Ashbel, 
Dribba Nanmin Ethni Rosh Ipim Hippim and Ard. These were the sons of Rachel who were born to Jacob fourteen and all. So Jacob had fourteen kids, that's nice. The son of Dan, Hishron, the sons of Ipatali, J Jahizel, Gunny, Jezer, and Shilliam. These were the sons born to Jacob by Biliam, whom Lebron had given to his daughter Rachel, seven and all. Right, so that's the family of Jacob's and his descendants, okay? Okay. All those who were who went to Egypt with Jacob, those who were his direct descendants, not counting his son's wives, numbered 66 persons. So 66 people came with Jacob, some, you know, not of him, but um, part of his family went to Egypt with him. With two sons who had been born to Joseph in Egypt, the members of Jacob's family, which went to Egypt, were 70 in all. Okay. Okay. Now Jacob sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to get directions to Goshen. When they arrived in the region of Goshen, Joseph had his chariot made ready and went to Goshen to meet his father in Israel. As soon as Joseph appeared before him, he threw his arms around his father. He wept for a long time. Israel said to Joseph, Now I am ready to die, since I have seen for myself that you are still alive. And Joseph said to his brothers and his father household, I will go up to the to go up and speak to the Pharaoh and will say to him, My brothers and my father's household who were living in the land of Canaan have come to me. The men are shepherds. They tend livestock and they have brought along their flocks and herds everything owned. When the Pharaoh calls you and asks what is your occupation, you should answer your your servants have tendered livestock from our boyhood on, just as your fathers did. Then you will be allowed to settle in the region of Goshen. For all the shepherds are detestable to the Egyptians. Alright, so basically sorry about that shake, my table's really loose. Um basically so um Joseph like okay guys all you have to do tell the pharaohs that you're take care of crops and take care of animals and you'll be fine okay nothing else okay so now we're going to chapter 47 now Joseph went and told the pharaoh my father and brother and brothers with their flocks and herds and everything they own have come from the land of Canaan and are now in Goshen he chose five of his brothers and presented them before the pharaoh pharaoh asked his Asked the brothers, "What is your occupation?" "Your servants are shepherds," they replied to the Pharaoh, "just as our fathers were." They also said to him, "We have come to live here for a while because the famine is severe in Canaan, and your servants' flock have no pastures. So now, please let your servants settle in Goshen." The Pharaoh said to Joseph, "Your father and your brothers have come to you, and the land of Egypt is before you. Sell your father and your brothers." In the best part of the land, let them live in Goshen, or Goshen. If you know for, know of any among them with a special ability, put them in charge of my own livestock. And then Joseph brought his father Jacob and presented him before the Pharaoh. After Jacob um, blessed Pharaoh, Pharaoh asked him, "How old are you?" And Jacob said to the Pharaoh, "The years of my pilum, pilum, pilum. I can't even say it." Pilgrimage, there we go, <laughs> are 130. My years have been few and difficult, and they do not equal the years of my pilgrimage of my fathers. I'm so sorry, guys. I should just say adventure, but that sounds bad. Then Jacob blessed the Pharaoh and went out from his presence. So the jo so Joseph settled his father and his brothers in Jib G Egypt and gave them property in the best part of the land, the district of Ramses, as the Pharaoh directed. Joseph also provided his father and his brothers and all his father's household with food, according to the number of their children. Okay. Next, like, paragraph has a little title. It says, Joseph in the Famine. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> there was no food, however, in the whole region, because the famine was severe, both Egypt and Canaan wasted away because of the famine. 
Joseph collected all the money that was to be found in Egypt and Canaan in payment for the grain they were buying. He brought it to the Pharaoh's palace. When the money of the people of Egypt and Canaan was gone, all Egypt came to Joseph and said, Give us food. Why should we die before your eyes? Our money is all gone. Then bring your livestock, livestock said Joseph. I will sell your food in exchange for your life, li, li, livestock since your money is gone. Okay. So basically there he's just saying, Oh, I'll sell your food. For your livestock, so like cows and, and like sheep and stuff and chicken. I guess that's what he's trying to say there. So they brought their livestock to Joseph, and he gave them food in exchange for their horses, their sheep and goats, oh, their cattle and their donkeys. So I was right, okay. And he brought them through that year with food in exchange for all their livestock. When that year was over, they came to him the following year and said, We cannot hide from our Lord the fact that since our money is gone and our livestock belongs to you, there is nothing left for our Lord except our bodies and our land. Why should we perish before your eyes? Man, these people are just like, why should we die, you know? It's like old as a famine. You you had food, but it's like you can't do too much about it. We in our land as well. Buy us in our land in exchange for food, and we will. And we with our land will be in bondage to the fair. Give us seed. Give us seed so that we may live and not die, and that the land may not become desolated. So Joseph brought all the land in Egypt for the fair. The Egyptians, one and all, sold their fields because the famine was so was too. Severe for them. The land became Pharaoh's, and Joseph reduced the people to service to from one end of the e one end of Egypt to the other. However, he did not buy the land of the priests because they received a regular allotment from the Pharaoh and had food enough from the allotment the Pharaoh gave them. That is why they did not sell their land. Okay, so priests have a pretty good time. Yeah. Joseph said to the people, Now that I have brought you, bought or brought you in your land today for the fair, here's the seed for you so you can plant the ground. But when the crop comes and give a fifth of it to the fair, the fourth the other four fifth you may keep as a seed for the fields, and as food for your yourselves, and your households, and your children. Oh man. Uh Joseph's already teaching people about um, uh, what type of farming. Um, I can't remember the name. If you guys know, um, comment down below. Um, it's like when you make enough food for your own, you keep like enough of it and you sell just a little bit. So you still have money and you still have food to serve on the table. Oh, what is it called? If you guys know, just comment down below. I'll be so thankful. Um... You have saved our lives, they said. May we find favor in the eyes of the Lord. We will be in bondage to the fair. I think it's like, um, it's some, this, yeah, okay. So Joseph established it as a law, consent the land in Egypt. Oh, it's sustainable farming. That's what it's called. It's still in the force today that a fifth of the produce belongs to the Pharaoh. It was only the land of the priests that did not become Pharaohs. Now the Israelites settled in the Egypt in the region of Goshen. They acquired property there and were fru fr fruitful and increased greatly in number. Jacob lived in Egypt 17 years and the years of his life were 147. When the time drew near for Israel to die, he called for his son Joseph and said to him, If I have found the favor in your eyes, put your hand under my thigh and promise that you will show me kindness and faithfulness. Do not bury me in Egypt, but when I rest with my fathers, carry me out of Egypt and bury me where they are buried. I will do as you say, he said. Swear to me, he said. Then Joseph swore to him. Israel worshipped as he leaned on top of his staff. Okay. So now we're going on chapter 48. Uh, Manasseh and Epirium, I think that's how you say his name, 
Could be wrong. I'm sorry. These names are... Okay. Sometime later, Joseph was told, Your father is ill. So he took his two sons, Manasseh and Ethereum, along with him. When Jacob was was told, Your son Joseph was... Or, Your son Joseph has come to you. The Israel rallied his strength and sat up on the bed. Joseph... Or not Joseph, but Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan. And there he blessed me and said to me, I am going to make you fruitful and increase your numbers. I will make you a community of people, and I will give you I will give this land as an everlasting possession to your descendants after you. Now then, your two sons born to you in Egypt before I came to you here will be the reckon as mine. Ethereum and Maseth, Manaseth will be mine, just as Reuben and Simon are mine. Any children born to you after them will be yours. In the territory they inherit, they will be re reckoned under the names of their brothers. As I was returning from Paddan, to my, to my sorrow, Rachel died in the land of Canaan. While we were still on the way, a little distance from Ephrathath, so I buried her there beside the road of Ephrath. This is uh, Bethlehem. Ooh, everyone know about that city, right? <laughs> when Israel <laughs> saw the sons of Joseph, he asked, Who are these? They are the sons of God has given me here, Joseph said to his father. Then the Israel said, Bring them to me so I may bless them. Now, Israel's eyes were failing because of old age, and he could just Hardly see, so Joseph brought his son close to him, and his father kissed him and embraced them. Israel said to Joseph, I never expected to see your face again, and now God has allowed me to see your children too. So, oh, then Joseph removed them from Israel's knee and bowed down with his face to the ground. And Joseph took both of them, Ephelium and his right toward Israel's left, and Han and Manasseh on his left towards Israel right hand and brought them close to him. Okay. So basically he has his two sons on his side, okay? And then Israel's in the middle and like give him a hug, I guess. Or they're bowing down. I think they're bowing down, all of them, and Israel's in front of them. From that little sense. Sorry. <laughs> but Israel reached out his right hand and put it on if Helium's head through he was younger and crossing his arms he put his left hand on Mizarian's head, even through Mizarian was a force burn. Then he blessed Joseph and said, May the gods before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walk faithfully, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day, the angel who has delivered me from harm. May he bless these boys. May they be called by my name and the names of my fathers Abraham and Isaac. And may they increase greatly on the earth. Cool. And when Joseph saw his father placing his right hand on if you're hearing him's head, he was displeased. So he took hold of his father's hand to move it from Ephraim's or Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to him, "No, my father, this is one. This one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head." But his father refused and said, "I know, my son. I know. He too will become a." A people he too will become a people and he too will become great nevertheless his younger brother will be greater than he and his descendants will become a group of nations he blessed them that day and said in your in your name will Israel pronounce this blessing may God make you like Hiram and Manasseh so put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh then Israel said to Joseph I'm about to die but God will be with you and take you back to the land of your fathers and to you I give one more ridge of land then to your brothers the ridge I took from the Amorites with the sword and my bow dang so basically um, Jacob has two sons okay and Philium is the younger one okay sorry um, and Manasseh is the older one okay but um, Israel is like, I'm going to put my right hand on um, 
Ethereum because he's gonna be greater. And basically, man says like trying to like he grabs his hand and tries to put it on Manasif. Okay, and Jacob's like trying to tell him that, but Israel's like no, no, no. Ethereum is gonna be greater. And Manasif just doesn't like that. Okay, he I feel like he's gonna do something in later chapters, but for right now. We only got two more chapters. I'll read them next time. And then we'll end the book of Genesis, guys. So, how about that? And then we'll go into Exorcist. And we all know what happens in Exorcist. So, hopefully. <laughs> but I am reading this so you guys can learn. So, um, thank you for watching, guys. Um, I hope you like it. I know I haven't been posting too much of these um, Bible readings, but we'll get there. Don't worry. Um, I hope everyone has a great Sunday tomorrow, but yeah, I'll start posting more of these uh, Bible readings. I know people like them, so we'll do it. Um, yeah, thank you for watching, guys. Please subscribe and share with your friends. Bye.